the FHA anti-flipping rule, and Fannie Mae's new 3% down loan as it pertains to real estate investors. That's what you're going to discover on this video. Hi, I'm Phil Pustiovsky with FreedomMentor.com. I'm a full-time real estate investor, real estate mentor and coach to many of the most successful investors across North America. And in this video, I want to describe what these two different loan programs, these two updates that are occurring as a result of these different programs, how that affects real estate investors, and specifically those investors that buy properties, single family homes, fix them up and then resell them, which is a, a large majority of the real estate investors out there. Okay, so first let's talk about FHA's anti-flipping rule. What does that mean? Okay, so the anti-flipping rule basically says that um, a new buyer, so I'm gonna call them an FHA buyer, somebody getting an FHA loan, when they are looking at buying a property, that property has to have title seasoning of 90 days. Title seasoning, 90 days. What's that mean? That means that the seller has owned the property for 90 days, okay? So that is what this anti-flipping rule is all about. The FHA buyer, if they're gonna get an FHA loan, the seller has had to be on title for 90 days. Now, for the past four years, 2010 through 2014, this anti-flipping rule has been waived. What they were doing was encouraging real estate investors to buy foreclosures, fix them up, and then sell them right away to re-stimulate what had become a uh, pretty serious real estate um, bursting of the bubble. So for four years, this was waived. Now, starting January 1st, 2015, this is back in effect, okay? So if you just bought a property, you're gonna fix it up, and you're gonna be the owner for less than 90 days, and an FHA buyer comes along, you have to wait till the 91st day to sign that contract with that FHA buyer. Does that make sense? That's the anti-flipping rule. Now, most real estate investors cringe at this because they think it's ridiculous. And I agree, because regardless of what you paid for a property, that should have nothing to do with what you can resell the property for. And so, even if you bought it really cheap today and you can sell it tomorrow for a lot more money, that shouldn't matter because an appraisal is going to establish value, not how long you've owned it. So this entire anti-flipping rule is ridiculous, but it is what it is and it's in place. Look, they, they put it on hold for four years, so we had a four-year heyday, if you will, but those days are over. Um, by the way, it wasn't really that big of a heyday. If you tried to sell a property to an FHA buyer and you owned it less than 90 days, it was tough. They would do two appraisals, then, a, then they'd make sure that the desktop appraisal matched the two actual physical appraisals. If there's anything wrong with the property, they demand an inspection be done in most cases. And if anything showed up on their inspection report, they made you fix it. So even trying to sell it to an FHA buyer when you own it less than 90 days during this quote four year uh, postponement of this rule was still a nightmare. So it wasn't that good of a thing even when it was. So if you're a real estate investor, buying houses, fix them up, and selling them. In most cases, you're buying those properties in areas and at price points that FHI, FHA buyers purchase because they do have limits. So these buyers are going to have limits uh, based on price. Um, and I've got another one of these markers right next to me here. So limits in most cases, what, like 300 in many parts of the country, uh, some parts 200. It depends on the area. So what I mean is you're not typically getting an FHA buyer on a half million dollar home, okay? And so FHA buyers, uh, not only is their limit typically in the range where we do our flipping of houses, but also I did, a, I did some research and I think something in the range of, it's kind of hard to figure it out, but something in the range of about 25% of all buyers in recent times have been FHA buyers. That's a lot. It's a lot. A lot of people have gotten FHA loans. Why is that? Here's the main reason, in my opinion. 
3.5% down payment requirement. To me, this is the 90%, this, this is the big, uh, the 80-20 rule, this is the 80, this is the 80% of the reason why. People are getting FHA loans because it only required 3.5% down. Now, there are some other little details. People like FHA loans because some of their underwriting guidelines are a little bit relaxed. For example, if you, um, if you have student loans and deferment, FHA buyers would not, uh, an FHA underwriting guideline, you don't have to put that in the debt to income ratio. But almost every other lender is like, well, wait a minute, just because the student loans are in deferment, they're going to have to pay them at some point. And so they actually include um, whatever those student loans and deferment, whatever that payment is, they include that in the debt to income ratio. So FHA has some, some flexibility there. Another thing FHA is somebody who's never bought a home before in their life and they have like no credit. Um, sometimes they'll use utility bills as a, as a trade line. So FHA has, un, has relaxed underwriting guidelines, but most importantly, it only requires 3.5% down. So that's why I think 25% of all buyers um, get FHA loans. So what does this mean to you as an investor? I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you, right? It means if you're trying to flip a property fast, you got a problem here. You got to wait 90 days. Well, that, you know, time is money. And what if you got the property under contract, like I sometimes talk about in my videos, and you find a buyer right away and you don't even own it yet? FHA buyers will make that really difficult. So, uh, and especially now that they have uh, they have closed the window and for January 1st, 2015. But when one door closes, another one opens. So you see that in the title of the video, Fannie Mae, they now have just uh, announced that they're gonna have a 3% down loan opportunity or option. So that's really exciting. Um, I need to give you a little bit of background too. So FHA is um, the Federal Housing Authority. They don't actually give the loan, they guarantee the loan. So when a bank, like Bank of America, when they uh, issue a loan that's an FHA loan, FHA is the one guaranteeing it. So if that person doesn't pay the loan, it goes into default and goes into foreclosure, it goes back to FHA, it doesn't go back to Bank of America. Bank of America gets their money back because it's guaranteed by FHA. And so, um, by the way, this, none of this matters if you're in Canada. Don't even worry about it. Or not the United States. This is all United States-based stuff. So if, if, uh, if FHA is the guarantor, then technically the bank is just making sure that it falls within their guidelines. And Fannie Mae is, is uh, somewhat similar but a little bit different. So Fannie Mae is going to buy the mortgage on the secondary market. market. So what's going to happen is the loan is going to get originated and then they're going to bundle up with a bunch of other loans into a package and then they're going to sell on the secondary mortgage market to Fannie Mae. So Fannie Mae actually buys the loan and then the, the bank usually continues to be the loan servicer. Okay, so Fannie Mae is now allowing for a 3% down. Now that doesn't mean the bank who's actually giving the money is going to do that, but it means that if they create a loan and there's only 3% down, that Fannie Mae would still buy it. Uh, but the person has to be a first-time home buyer. So that does create, a, that does kind of shrink that a little bit. But it's nice, you know, one door closes January 1st, that door's closing, this one's opening. Fannie Mae, um, and again, this depends on which mortgage broker you talk to, but from everything I can gather, uh, usually has about a 30-day title seasoning rule, which is not nearly as bad. 30-day title seasoning rule uh, for, for Fannie Mae. A lot of arrows, a lot of things moving around here. So. Um, when you're trying to sell a property and you haven't owned it very long, one of the big lessons to learn here is this. What kind of loan is that buyer trying to use? If they're using an FHA loan and you've only owned the property 30 days, you know you can't even try to sell it to them. You can't even sign the contract with them until the 90th day. Now. Fannie Mae, uh, if you've owned it 30, I guess you, you've reached that, that period of time, you're good to go. But since this is relatively new, that's not going to be as established of a loan, so it may not go through either. So when you are trying to sell a property, one of the biggest questions to ask is, what kind of loan is it? Now, what if, see, if somebody has 3.5%, they may have 5%. So what you may want to try to do, even if it's an FHA buyer, is ask them would they be open to going conventional and using 5% down, and then you could pay all the closing costs. Because see, maybe they have 3.5% down and then they have another 1.5% saved up for closing costs. So 5% is usually the cutoff for conventional. 
a lot of conventional loans are 5%. And again, um, as I just mentioned, conventional, 3% uh, down, Fannie Mae is considered like a conventional loan. So you may even be able to go to the lowest three, but at least five. So you want to try to take borrowers conventional whenever possible. One of the big tips I have, and it's in another video by the way, is where anytime you list a property for sale, put in the realtor remarks that you require that the whoever makes the offer to pre-qualify with your mortgage broker. And hopefully that will also help you because if they qualify, pre-qualify with that mortgage broker, they would say, yeah, they go conventional here. Yeah, they're an FHA buyer, but they can also go conventional. You want to try to take these people conventional, even if you have to pay the closing costs or something or give them some incentive. Because if you do, conventional is a lot easier, not only from an underwriting perspective, because it usually is a lot faster than FHA, a lot easier to get a, get a deal done, even if you have a low amount of title season, you may even on the property for 15 days when the loan's conventional. In fact, local banks, they don't even care what the title season is. It's really just the larger organizations that are selling on the secondary market do care a little bit. Um, but if they're going to sell to Fannie Mae, of course, they have to, they have to follow their guidelines. So um, I've talked in other videos about this, but I mean, just to kind of summarize, what we're talking about here is when you're selling a property that you've owned either a day, 30 days, you definitely need to scrutinize what kind of loan they're getting. And ideally, you want them to go conventional. And if they're an all cash buyer, hallelujah, that's what you really want. If it's cash, I even take a cut. I mean, I won't even sell at full price. If they're going to pay all cash, it's worth it to me to pay it, you know, to. If, if, a, if an FHA buyer comes along at 120, conventional's at 110, and the all cash at 105, all cash at 105 is getting the deal. Now, I mean, again, each situation's a little different. If you've got a go-to mortgage broker and they know for sure that the conventional buyer at 110, no question they're gonna close because they got a perfect uh, loan application, then that's different. So that's where also, if you are a mortgage broker, or you, uh, you've ever been one in the past, that's a huge benefit in being a real estate investor because you can anticipate which potential buyers are most likely to actually close and which ones their loans are gonna fall apart. Because most people go into buying a home with all kinds of um, unbridled optimism that they're gonna get the loan, everything's gonna work out well, but we're investors. We have to be somewhat pessimistic and keep an eye on all the potential problems that it can occur. And probably the major problem any investor deals with is when the buyer's loan falls apart right before closing and they don't get the loan. So the way you, you help yourself is you have to study uh, these buyers and interview them and talk to them or their buyer's agent, if they're represented by an agent, and find out what kind of loan they're getting. Talk to their mortgage broker. Really find out that situation to make sure you don't tie your property up to sell it and then they drag you down 45 days, the loan doesn't go through because you haven't owned it 90 days, or if it's a Fannie Mae, you have, they have some uh, obscure underwriting rule. And so you've really got to do your homework up front before you agree to sell and you, you countersign that offer from that new buyer. All right, well, these are the changes that are occurring here for uh, the beginning of 2015. So I think this is, um, this is important for you to know. I mean, I, I don't talk a lot about the news because I think a lot of the news is just noise and it's not actually giving you any real um, a signal, real truth. But when there are major changes and something like in this case FHA, 25% of all buyers, now they have, uh, they have reinstated their anti-flipping rule. I mean, that's the kind of quote news you need to know about because this does affect you in a major way. In fact, we just we just did it, uh, actually we're, we're doing a deal and we just did another one about a month ago with a student uh, where the new buyer was getting the uh, FHA and, and all went well. So. I mean, we're going to be affected by this because we have been taking advantage of the fact that we can sell to FHA buyers and we haven't owned it 90 days. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you want to learn more, head over to our website, freedommentor.com. My name is Phil Pustiowski. Thanks so much for watching. Any questions, concerns, uh, comments just below here, and I write those in, and I try to check those periodically and answer those for you. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.